both sides. Mozart, come on on stage and give it to him. Come on. What? Malcolm is 13. Skinny and brown, he wears white Air Force Ones and a notorious B.I.G. shirt. When I tell him he needs to start going back to school, he mouths the word slow in between loud smacks of chewing gum. F you. As we speak on a lonely street in the city, a stranger walks by. Malcolm looks in that direction. In between blanks, he pulls out an automatic Glock, aimed sideways. He cocks the heavy metal chamber backwards, point blank at his father. Once a three-time felon, now decrepit and cowering, Malcolm is trying to buy back his soul from the man that sold his mother, sold his sister, sold his soul. All these things stolen, this man-child is attempting to recover. I hold my hands up between them, as if hands could ever stop bullets softly whispering, Malcolm, no. I say, Malcolm. Your ancestors have already mapped out your destiny. Your future has already been personally signed by God. You will be the first best, the last great, the one and only. Just when I think I'm getting through to him, his father on his knees begging. Malcolm aims the gun at his own head. Bullet lets his brain, comes out the other side. A young man just died. His mother asked me to eulogize him at the funeral. The whole neighborhood is mourning his death. We weren't there to save his life. As I stand in front of a casket used too soon, I say, there are no words, no poems, no promises unkept, no sermons on pulpits to bring this boy back to life. God didn't take him because he needed another angel. God took him because we didn't know how to treat an angel here on earth. That was awesome. Congratulations to Mozart, y'all. Give it up.